It's that time of year again when we have to actually clean up the garden. And there's so much information out there from you should leave your plants in place to you should remove them entirely and some in between things as well. So today's video, we're gonna look at what rules you need to follow in determining whether your plant should stay or go, should be composted or not, and why. So let's get into it. So first thing to look at is leaving plants in place. The reason why you would leave a plant in place comes down to two big things. Number one, actually allowing for snow capture, which will increase your soil moisture, reduce the amount of watering you need to do, and overall help with soil health. The second big reason you would leave a plant in place is that it will feed said critters over the winter time. Now I'm not talking microbe critters, but I am talking macrofauna, like birds or squirrels, mice in some cases as well. And this would fall under the category of things like sunflower seeds, for example. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up and sharing this video. We do science-based gardening, which is kind of cool, a little bit different and a ton of fun if you're a plant or garden nerd whatsoever. Now, if you're looking for a windbreak that allows for snow capture, or you're looking to feed critters in the winter, you may want to consider leaving taller plants in place to allow for this. The leaving of these plants will also result in some benefits that you can also get through other methods, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which would include lower soil erosion rates, as well as encouraging microbe activity up until the frost hits and penetrates into the ground, as well as in the early spring when things begin to uh, thaw out, there is going to be a food source there. One common misconception is that you are composting in place. And while you can do this to a degree, this process does take time. And that's particularly true for our climates where it does get cold enough that microbe or decomposition just stalls entirely during the winter months. We don't see much of this composting benefit till several years down the road. So that's one reason why you would leave your plants in situ. But one thing you may wanna consider is if you have disease, this can come in the form of bacterial blights or fungus such as powdery mildew, for example. These forms of disease can actually be exasperated or continued into the future if you leave your plants in situ. And these are plants you may want to consider actually removing and in some cases not even composting. Now I've done several videos on blight and powdery mildew and downy mildew and quite a few actually and each one of those I go through what to do with the plant debris and whether or not it is harmful long term to your compost or your garden. General rule of thumb is that hot composting destroys is nearly anything but if it's not hot composted enough or there is plant debris left over we tend to see these diseases carry on into future gardens so really nail in or hone in on your composting abilities and if you're ever unsure of how well your composting or how hot it's getting consider leaving those plants off to the side and tossing in the garbage. Don't put them in your local compost because you're just gonna cause issues for other people as well. Generally speaking, I find city compost don't get hot enough to kill all the weed seeds or the disease and it can cause issues into the future. That's my experience with city communal composting. The other reason why you wouldn't want to leave your plants in situ is you have if you have a known pest problem. So if you have cucurbits, a uh, plant, pests, so cucumber beetles, uh, potato beetles, things like that, you definitely don't want to leave that debris in place and you want to remove it. If you've had issues with things like thrips, these are soil-borne problems that tend to harbor down and make a home in your mulch and your plant debris, so removing of this can actually help the winter months do essentially pest uh, reclamation or pest control on your soil surface. So this would be another case where you'd wanna remove a lot of that plant debris. However, despite removing, we can still gain the benefit of the root biomass. And the root biomass will help with soil structure, which reduces soil erosion. And the root biomass will also help with feeding the microbes in the fall and early spring, 
when the ground begins to come out of its totally frozen state. And the way to do this is actually by cutting plants off at the top or at the soil surface. The process of doing this simply involves using a knife or some snips and trying to cut the plant as close to the base as possible. The only time when this wouldn't work is when I notice blight or some sort of disease penetrating into that soil surface. Now the only scenario where I would actually encourage you to disrupt both the soil and the roots and just really yank things out is in the case of voles. Voles eat roots and plant biomass that is below the ground. They also enjoy mulches and leaf color cover to hide and burrow around in. So if you have a vole issue, yank everything out. Give it all a good tug because ultimately speaking, this is the only thing that is going to uh, prevent or deter them from your garden is just completely removing their food source and their sense of shelter and security. So that is the time when I would remove it. Now, as you guys know, I'm not pro or anti tillage. I actually don't put much weight in that uh, in a home garden perspective. Anyways, large scale farming is a different conversation, but your small little garden, um, not too, too concerned with tillage. What I will say though, is I don't advocate for tillage or soil disruption during these fall months. In, if at all possible, we want to keep that soil structure kind of hardened up, nice and dry, as well as replacing mulch. So removing the old mulch, if you've had disease issues or pest issues, putting new mulch in place and just really preserving that soil because the springtime in particular, or freeze thaw cycles in the case of like Alberta with your Chinooks, uh, Calgary, you get Chinooks quite often, you end up with a lot of topsoil loss. And we want to prevent that because the topsoil is where there's a ton of nutrients, a ton of goodies for growing um, in the season. So we want to protect that as much as possible. So I don't, uh, whenever possible, try to keep the plants or the root biomass in place. But in the case of voles, give it a good yank because more damaging than just potential runoff uh, erosion. So anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Sharing is caring. So share this video wherever you think it is applicable. It'll help people out. Let's try to grow this community. We're going into winter gardening and fall gardening, indoor gardening. You guys will love it. My goal is always to reduce your grocery bill with science. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. The same plane just keeps flying around. It's very irritating. He's like low too, so it's like really irritating. I live by the airport, so it's like kind of a situational issue when I film, but that guy's being particularly irritating.